Muchas gracias a nuestros panelistas en la sesión. Thank you so much to our speakers. And now, before we move on to the second part of the event, we would like to share a video with you. It's an anniversary uh, video, okay? Damos ahora inicio a la segunda parte. Now we start the second part of uh, this event. We engage in dialogue with uh, the director of strategic studies, Francisco José da Cova. Please join us on the stage. Thank you. Welcome. General, it is mandatory to start of uh, discussing U Ukraine. Last year, only a few weeks have gone by, by since the invasion of uh, uh, Ukraine by Russia. So where are we now? Uh, can we start considering a um, negotiation table to start discussing peace? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me to come uh, one more year to this uh, home, which is, we, we feel it as our home. So as you say, this year has been a very intense year. A year ago, we were still impacted and shocked by the invasion and uh, everything that was ahead of us was uncertain as well as open. And since there has been a failure in the fast uh, 
a victory and uh, on the part of uh, Moscow, Russia, and due to the persistence of uh, Ukraine, we had, as I say, a reaction on the part of uh, Ukraine, and uh, Ukraine recovered part of the territory that had been occupied, also recovered Kharkov and Kherson, which is the capital city of a blast that had been occupied by Russia. And then we reached uh, winter time. At winter time, operations were slowed down. They were not stopped by slow, uh, slow down. And uh, after having significant uh, losses on both sides. We are not well aware of the numbers, but we are sure that numbers are really high. And the parties also took part of that opportunity to recover and also to correct some of the tactical mistakes that they had made. In this context, I would like to highlight two aspects, two of the scenes that Russia did in winter. First of all, persistent destruction campaign of uh, Ukraine infrastructures, of course, that has long-term repercussions, and also something which is not much discussed, which is yet very relevant. That is to say that Russia has uh, strengthened the uh, land and to create barriers to protect the forces. This is very important as uh, in view of the uh, Ukraine counteroffensive, counterattack that previous tasks carried out by Russia could make it very, very difficult to, for Ukraine to carry out counterattack. So Ukraine has kept the line of contact so that to prevent Russia from moving forward. And so the last thing that we have seen is the tanks. And now I think we are at the forefront of the new summer and autumn campaign in Ukraine. What may have happened, we just don't know. And probably this is bad news. Perhaps compacts will restart, we will continue to have significant losses, and perhaps variations on the field would not be highly significant. So therefore, we are likely to have an autumn with uh, people that are really oh, devastated forces and wishful thinking. Well, perhaps negotiations will come. Surely, negotiations will come someday, sometime, but most likely they will not take place soon. By the time negotiations will take place, being realistic, I think that best case scenario is that the cease, there will be a ceasefire, and there have been already some agreements. Uh, agreements for exchange of uh, prisoners. Perhaps there will be more freedom of movement in terms of humanitarian aid, coming back of displaced people. But as of there, a new phase will start that will be indefinite in time, as there are very, very many red lines. If we are talking about territory, Crimea is a red line for opposite reasons for both sides or Donbass or the four provinces that are attached to. We would need to start talking about war crimes, reconstruction of Ukraine, and what is most important than the status of Ukraine, we need to be reconsidered, rethought regarding Europe and also security guarantees for Ukraine, not through the joining of NATO, which no one considers to take place in the short or mid-term, yet Ukraine will need to have security guarantees, guarantees that should come or will come from the Western world. And also, we should also think about Russia. There will never be uh, security in Europe if uh, Russia is not taken into consideration because Russia is Europe. So therefore, we have the strategic concept that was recently approved in Madrid that 
this time this new strategic concept says that the North Atlantic area again is not in peace. So we are building up a security infrastructure with structure against Russia. And I wish that someday, sometime we will build up we will that up jointly with Russia. This is a crystal ball exercise. We need to watch events closely. And once the well, we would just uh, well, we we just don't know what will happen. So the main concern in Europe is Ukraine. Ukraine is uh, very close to Europe. Is there any international event that we should be concerned about as well? Yes, well, it was mentioned before. What is concerns us the most is Ukraine, of course, because that has a direct impact on us as Europeans. Therefore, we can say that Ukraine is the most urgent topic. As the well continuation of the conflict on well continues to increase international tensions as well as the st structures and infrastructures of Europe. Our response so far has been impeccable, but there will be a new round of sanctions. There will have different positions from different institu institutions, Brussels institutions, of course, energy impact, financial impact. So therefore, well, we I just don't want the war to continue, not at all, for very many reasons. So therefore, Ukraine becomes the most important, the most urgent, yet it is not the most important. As you mentioned, there is a player which is uh, present everywhere, which is the uh, China. China is present in Africa, in Ibero-America, in Middle East, in the Middle East, former foreign Minister of China hosted the restoration of diplomatic relations of Iran and Pekin, not in Washington. Notice that China is on the in the region where we have the Taiwan and also China Sea, North Korea. Also, we are seeing relationships between South Korea and Japan. We also have enhanced relations on the part of UK with Vietnam and the Philippines. They are going back to different agreements, four-way agreements. So China is present in cyberspace, in the outer space. China is a big economic power big geopolitical power and more and more military power. And China, even if it's still in some aspects far away from the US, so let us say it is the only power that can speak face to face with uh, on an equal uh, footing with uh, US. But China is not alien to Ukraine either. When Putin went to Peking 4th February last year, due to the opening of Winter Olympic Games, well, Putin went to China to tell his good friend, President Xi, what was latest before the imminent invasion of uh, Ukraine. Why is China paying so much attention to Russia? Well, big power are not, uh, powers are not alien to these challenges. And China, same as any other player, want to defend their interests in this scenario. China want to maintain the trade uh, relationships with Europe, and the world could jeopardize that. And China does not want to have an absolute defeat of Russia because of the strategic uh, relationship that they had had for many years, which is more and more advantageous for China. As a result of the war, uh, Russia is more reliant on China, and China wants to be present in the reconstruction of Ukraine, which sooner or later will take place. Well, even if this is a bit simplistic or too much of a summary, and perhaps not 100% accurate, 
Let us say that Ukraine is the most urgent, but China, together with the U.S., is the most important. Well, other than the urgent and important, as uh, is there any other hot point in the world that perhaps is passing unnoticed to us and that we should not overlook? Well, there are many hot points. And of course, it is clear that all our attention is focused on Ukraine and uh, Russia. We should not overlook China. We also mentioned other concerning scenarios in the world. We are Spaniards, therefore members of the Southern European group. And we are and we continue to be solidary to our Eastern Europe allies as we share their concerns or the willingness to resolve the big crisis of Ukraine. And because we have been solidary, we continue to be solidary. It is we are we should also not forget that our neighboring countries are also of concern to us. So the North Africa uh, region, Sahel region, uh, region, and Crimea Gulf are having wars and conflicts. Libya, Sahel, Togo, Benin, countries that were kind of far away from jihadist uh, wave are back to conflict. So therefore, we should repeat, South also exists. That has also been included in the strategic concepts. From the South to say, okay, let us move from words to action, and let us be aware that stability of the region that I mentioned is relevant for our stability, but not only for Southern European countries, but also for the whole of Europe, as it is the case in Ukraine. So thank you very much for your thoughts, for your insights about the reality that we're facing every day. We would like to thank you for your presence and, uh, well, we look forward to having you again with us next year. Thank you.